everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality, coming back with you today with an article from the Washington Free Beacon. This is dated, oh, July 23rd, and it's another Kamala list of just dumb things she's done. It says, seven hoaxes pushed by the truths we hold, author Kamala Harris, and I believe that is the title of a book that she wrote. It says, Harris spread false claims of forced sterilizations at ICE facilities under Trump, because, you know, I mean... I, I see this with her in the American flag. She, she needs to take that off because she is not a supporter of America. So as presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, Kamala Harris has peddled a series of hoaxes as U.S. Senator and Vice President, a Washington Free Beacon analysis found. You guys didn't really need to probably do much analysis on that. <laughs> but uh, just saying. This here are the seven most egregious hoaxes pushed by Harris, author of the memoir, The Truths We Hold. You know, it's funny that she calls a book that when she is basically incapable of telling the truth. This is Juicy Smollier. See, Juicy Smollier is one of the kindest, most gentle human beings I know, Harris wrote on January 29, 2019. Days earlier, the actor claimed two Trump supporters, remember in, oh yeah, it's going to say it right here, I was going to bring up the thing about it, like in sh deep blue Chicago, it says the actor claimed two Trump supporters in MAGA hats brutally beat him on a Chicago street as they shouted anti-gay and anti-black slurs. And keep in mind too that it was also during what they called a polar vortex, so it was like negative 16 degrees out or something like that, and it was the middle of the night and there was basically nobody outside because of this. So just, just remember that as well. It says, Harris joined a swarm of celebrities and Democratic politicians in denouncing the attack, which they claimed was an example of the rising tide of hate crimes in the Trump era. Yeah, funny that all the hate crimes seem to be coming from, you know, the people on the left. There's like nobody on the right doing that stuff. So this was an attempted modern-day lynching, Harris wrote, and here is the, her embedded tweet of saying all that, and it says, but it was all an elaborate lie. Smoulier had hired two friends, both black, to stage an attack on him to garner public sympathy. He was convicted of making false statements to police and sentenced to 150 days in jail. Harris lightly criticized Smoulier after his ruse was exposed, saying she was sad, disappointed, and frustrated, and also she was taken for a ride and just didn't want to admit that uh, she was got. But Harris, the former Attorney General of California, quickly pivoted to using Smoulier's lie as, the, as a teachable moment about the scourge of legitimate hate crimes across the country, which were, were like, they're either hoaxes or they're coming from the left, <laughs> like hoaxes like this one. So at the same time, we must speak the truth. Hate crimes are on the rise in America, coming from the left, not from the right, said Harris, who has repeatedly dodged questions about her facilitation of the Smoulier hoax. And that should be something that comes up if she is the actual presidential nominee. So it says, horse riding border agents whipped Haitian migrants. I remember this story. It says, in September 2021, photographs went viral of horse riding customs and border protection agents attempting to round up a group of Haitian migrants who had illegally crossed the U.S.-Mexico border. It stoked outcry from liberals who claimed the photos showed the agents using whips to hunt down black migrants, evoking images of the slave patrols of yesteryear. Harris, who served as, as the administration's borders are, oh, there it is, joined the fray, accusing the federal agents of horrible atrocities against the Haitian migrants. But human beings should never be treated that way, and I am deeply troubled by it, said Harris, who called for a thorough investigation. And literally anybody at the time that saw that, that picture knew that this isn't what happened, but, you know, because Democrats are stupid and Elon hadn't bought Twitter yet, we all had to deal with the obvious that didn't happen. So it says an internal investigation debunked all of the most serious allegations against the border agents. While it found examples of inadequate pol policies and training, the supposed whips seen in the photographs were actually reins for the horses, and that was the thing that we knew at the time, which border agents often ride in rough terrain. Yeah, because cars cannot do that. It says, the investigation found no evidence that agents struck any person with horse reins, the investigation found. It says, not only were, uh, it says the investigation found, and it finishes with the investigation found. Okay, that's just a weird sentence. Anyway, it says, not only were the migrants unharmed, they were allowed to remain in the United States. There is no evidence that any migrants were forced to return to Mexico or denied entry to the United States, the report said. Harris has not apologized for her remarks, and yeah, I don't see that happening either. Then it says, forced sterilizations at Trump-era immigration detention facility. And I believe this is the one where, oh, yep, I do see it below there that uh, the dude who was accused of this is suing MSNBC over this because they lied about what was happening. But let's just get into it. It says, <clears throat> in September 2020, a former employee at an Immigration and Customs Enforcement facility in Georgia claimed a physician had performed unnecessary hysterectomies on numerous immigrant women. The whistleblower, Don Wooten, said the physician in question, Mahendra Amin, 
was referred to by detainees as the uterus collector, and it turns out that basically this woman made it all up, just so you know. So terrorists joined the frenzy in calling for an investigation into the horrific allegations. Forced sterilization has a long and dark history in our country, and this must be investigated immediately, said Harris. But Wooten made up many of the claims, there you go, like I said, according to several independent investigations. Wooten had no first-hand knowledge of the allegations against Amin, and had not spoken to any detainees who claimed the physician mistreated them. A Democrat-led Senate investigation found Amin performed only two hysterectomies during his time at the facility, both of which were deemed medically necessary. The physician has sued MSNBC, good, for defamation for airing multiple segments based on Wooten's allegations. Emails revealed through the lawsuit show MSNBC anchors Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes were skeptical of Wooten, but aired her story anyway, and Harris has not apologized for her role in stoking the hoax. Because she's like, everything she does is based on emotion as opposed to fact. Okay, so if something goes against like what her belief system is, you know, then she's just going to like lash out about it instead of being like, yeah, maybe that's not actually uh, what happened. So let's go to Michael Brown's murder and it has it in scare quotes there. And I feel like I'm about to sneeze. So give it just a second here. Okay, it seems to be going away. Let's get into it. It says, Michael Brown's murder forever changed Ferguson and America. Harris wrote on August 9th, 2019, the five-year anniversary of Brown's death. It says, Brown's death was a rallying cry for liberal activists and helped spark the Black Lives Matter movement. Democrats and activists claimed Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson, who is white, murdered the black teenager in cold blood as he held up his arms in surrender, shouting, don't shoot. And before I go on, if you know anything about this, you know that that's not at all what happened because, of course, you were lied to about it. So it says, his tragic death sparked a desperately needed conversation and a nationwide movement. We must fight for stronger accountability and racial equity in our justice system, Harris wrote. But Brown was not murdered, and Wilson shot the 19-year-old in self-defense, according to the Obama Justice Department. And, okay, it does actually, this next paragraph does go into what actually happened. Okay, <clears throat> it says, Brown was far from the gentle giant portrayed in the liberal media. Moments before his encounter with Wilson... Brown assaulted a convenience store clerk while stealing cigarettes. When Wilson stopped Brown on the street, Brown attacked the officer inside his cruiser, grabbed Wilson's service weapon, and fired it inside the car. Brown fled, but then turned around and charged at Wilson, according to eyewitnesses. And I read a lot of this case. This was before I really, again, became political, just to see, like, what the hell was actually was going on with this. And if, like, you can read the witness testimony about it, and, like, it was basically every witness that they had that was like they had a bunch of witnesses that were either um people that turns out didn't they said that they saw everything but it turns out like they absolutely could not have seen it you know and they were all people that had very spotty records and then there were people who like actually saw what happened they were all people with like uh squeaky clean records um and that were like yeah and they basically said this that the kid charged at the cop and like it says here the obama justice department uh cleared him so she's passing a hoax that he was murdered he was not murdered okay he was it was a self-defense killing the cop feared for his life and this kid unfortunately and it sucks because he was a kid he was like 18 uh this is 19 here yeah he um yeah the cop ended his life because he the cop was attacked but leave it to kamala harris to just you know bs you so it says, Julie Swetnick says, much of Harris's support among Democrats stems from her high-profile performance in the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Harris took the lead in promoting the unsupported allegations that Kavanaugh, you know, did that word, harassed a high school classmate, Christine Blasey Ford, and engaged in other crude behavior as a young man. Beyond Ford, Harris touted other witnesses found to have fabricated their allegations against Kavanaugh. Harris and her Democratic colleagues touted the serious and credible allegations of Julie Swetnick, who claimed Kavanaugh and his friends routinely spilled or spiked drinks of girls at high school parties in the 1980s in order to do that word to them. Swetnick, represented at the time by disgraced attorney Michael Evanati, <laughs> there's a clue about where this is going to go, claimed she was assaulted at a party Kavanaugh attended. Harris and others praised Swetnick and other Kavanaugh accusers for taking great personal risks to go public against the judicial nominee and urged a federal investigation into her allegations. But Swetnick lied, according to the Senate Judiciary Committee. The committee referred her and Avenatti to the FBI for investigation after she admitted in a television interview that she never witnessed Kavanaugh spiking drinks at parties. The committee found Swetnick had a history of making false legal claims and false allegations of that kind of misconduct. And I feel like the sneeze is coming back right now. So I'm going to hold on for just a second. All right, let's go down to Jacob Blake. This Harris's first act after accepting the vice presidential nomination in August 2020 was a trip to Wisconsin to meet the family of Jacob Blake, a black man shot by police in Kenosha during an arrest attempt. 
The shooting, Harris said, had pierced the soul of the nation. It absolutely did nothing of the sort. As according to Democrats and liberal news outlets, the case was yet another example of systemic racism, which isn't a thing, prevalent in policing. The case touched off deadly riots and looting in Kenosha. It turns out it was all BS, but it says, but Blake was far from the innocent victim Harris and others portrayed. He was shot after brandishing a knife against a police officer who was trying to arrest him on an outstanding warrant related to his, uh, that kind of assault charge. Blake had an extensive criminal history, including charges of domestic abuse and those kinds of crimes that you see there. Yeah, this was, again, another thing that was totally, like, just <laughs> um, overplayed in the media. Um, so good job, Kamala Harris. Just keep uh, passing off those lies and then talking as if you like you're a truth teller, which you are in no way, shape, or form that sort of thing. It says Joe Biden is on top of it. it. Says perhaps Harris's most egregious hoax has been that her boss Joe Biden had a firm grasp on the duties of his office and that there would be no need for her to replace him. And this is what Trump needs to hammer her on if she is the actual nominee. Is just you were in on the cover up. Why didn't you say anything? In February, Harris claimed Biden was on top of and in front of all of his presidential duties. She was responding to a report from special counsel Robert Hur that said Biden displayed a faulty memory throughout an interview about his handling of classified documents. Harris said the report was a gratuitous and politically motivated attack on the president. So she shot down other concerns about Biden's age. After this year's State of the Union speech, Harris said Biden was absolutely on fire. For Biden, what is that, like not slurring all of his words? And that his performance answered any question that anyone might have about his capabilities. Now, it made it worse, because they all did. But she was ready. She said she was ready to replace Biden if necessary, but it's not going to be necessary. Now, Harris is the presumptive Democratic Party nominee after Biden bowed out of the presidential race over concerns about his disastrous debate performance against former President Donald Trump last month. Harris defended Biden after the debate as a real leader, which he's not, even after she acknowledged he got off to a slow start. It says, but numerous sources have come forward... Since the debate detailing instances stretching back years where Biden appeared incoherent or confused during meetings with government officials, that has put the spotlight on Harris and others in Biden's orbit regarding what his inner circle knew about his true condition. And the Harris campaign did not respond to a request for comment. Yes, because literally everything here makes her look horrible, as it should, because she's just horrible. <laughs> so... So another list here, and I've had a bunch of these the last few days, so let me know what you think about this. Uh, like, is this someone that you really would vote for, someone that just has to lie about things that she doesn't really need to lie about? So, yeah, let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. I'm going to go sneeze, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.